Hi everyone, this is Flower Child 567. Hi Whitehead, hi Visionary. I'm just setting up so I've got a nice scene and some good music for you just to listen to for a few minutes and I'll be back.
Hi there, everyone. It's me, Flower Child. <laughs> and uh, I'm here outside of the house where we usually meet. And um, hi, White Sand. Hey, Indian Chief. Russian girl. And uh, hey, T-Chard. So good to see you. It's so good to see all of you here today um, for the Friday uh, Tamriel Storyteller Hour. And um, I've got some fun things planned for you. But uh, I wanted to come outside because I, I uh, wasn't quite ready to get started. And I thought how nice it would be that you see what I get to see. <gasps> Look at I've decorated the front entrance to to the retreat and here we are we're gonna go in and get started because we have a full day or a full hour I should say oopsie <laughs> I guess I have to come out of that first person view I do not know but it's not letting me uh, open up why is it why isn't it letting me open up oh yeah I have to exit that oh I'm always having problems with tech gosh tea jarred what did you just do oh i wish i knew how to do that big full screen congratulations or thank you thank you thank you um but tea jarred just um subscribed and uh yay you are on your third month now i think hey strong onion how are you nice to have you here you guys rock and don't forget that right now there is a 25% off um, subscription renewal so it's well worth it all right here we are <laughs> and um, I have some cool things planned I think let's go ahead and get started so let's light our candles here and I'll come in close and let's open up the doors and pull out our apocryphal tome and open that and now we are officially ready to begin. All right, so I have uh, something a little different for you. Um, let me get myself situated here and around to you. I actually have um, some lore that I'm going to be reading that is um, about the Gold Coast, um, which I've been exploring on my own. Uh, and... Um, it, it, there's some interesting lore that is attached to that zone and uh, let me see if I can pull it up for you real quick um, oops. it's over Gold Coast I think is right here is this Gold Coast no it takes me a minute to find it just a second I think it's right there yeah here's the Gold Coast so you can see this is where the Dark Brotherhood um, sanctuary is the the primary one and um, it only has two little uh, towns in it it's it's quite a, a small map um, but I am uh, doing some of the Dark Brotherhood or assassin uh, uh, quests this main storyline there um, on this on this character uh, just so that I am uh, getting her leveled up to a little slightly higher hey 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 hi tight slide hi alone dark how are you happy to see you I hope I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season and um, getting ready for a new year oh my gosh you guys seriously we got 2024 just ahead of us and um, that's pretty exciting when you think about it. So we're all getting ready to celebrate that that new year, you know. And hey, thanks. Thanks, Visionary. Yeah, happy new year to you and everyone. So, um, all right. So the Gold Coast, first of all, I know everybody likes to know what I'm wearing. So let me... Uh, let me get here again so I'm facing the camera and pull out so that you can you can see. So I um, am currently wearing 
um, an outfit. I have my gear on. I have my regular armor gear on hidden underneath, but I am wearing the passion. Let me get here. Passion flower. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, there it is. I just skipped over it. The passion dancers attire. And that comes with that little um, passion flower. Um, and I'm also wearing, let me, let me jump here. I'm also wearing the crystal frost skin that you get from the, uh, doing the winter, the, the winter Ritz um, event during the event. So it's a uh, frost atronach. And then of course I'm wearing my, my uh, blue hair cause I did the azure ombre because it's so cool. And I'm wearing the personality of the um, Passion Muse, and I'm working hard, hard, hard uh, to, um, to get uh, my, um, let's see, where is she? Passion, oh, the, the skin, the Passion Dancer skin. Um, there's the garment, Metal Breeze Memories, there it is. I'm working hard to be able to get this skin because it's really, really cool looking. And, uh, and I'm, I, I have my, I have my, uh, Passion Dancer Blossom Pet already, um, created again. So now, um, I just have to continue to work on my... On the skin and then she'll be 100% and this um, um, outfit and skin and a uh, pose and everything is in honor of Di Bella um, and uh, today we're gonna actually be doing a little uh, honoring of Di Bella after we're done with some of the lore from Gold Coast hi there Istanbul and oxygen nice to have you here today all right so let's look at the gold coast now the reason why i decided to do the gold coast even though i'm not nearly done with it and i don't have the map or other paraphernalia props because you know how i like to do them props um is because of the pirate queen and the pirate queen is a quest um, that uh, every assassin goes to through. All right, so I'm going into the lore library here because these aren't um, interactive books. They're lore books that are in our lore library, and I'm going to the Gold Coast Tomes, and um, I'm going to start off with the Pirate Queen of the Gold Coast, and um, Pirate Queen of the Gold Coast. Now, uh, you know, I, I have Irish heritage in me, and I uh, um, we have we in our ancestral uh, uh, lineage we have a, a pirate queen too but she was part of uh, well an invasion by Britain and um, you know the stealing of our our homes and our crops especially in Northern Ireland and the starvation they uh, uh, they were responsible for our starvation because they took all of our potato crops and um, Molly McGee was the pirate queen and she took a ship and went out and uh, her and her little fleet attacked all the pirates um, going between uh, Ireland and England with all of the potatoes and so they would attack pirate queen of the Gold Coast I'll speak in Irish. By Madeira Salviticus, Historian University of Gwynlam. The Gold Coast has undergone some radical changes since Varen Aquilarius led his rebellion against the Longhouse Emperor Lovis in 2 Era 576. First, the region's inhabitants banded together to build Varian's Wall, as discussed in greater detail in my treaties of the same name. The protected boundary basically separated the Gold Coast from the Colvidian Highlands and served to keep the area safe from imperial retaliation and other extreme threats. Second, the region took advantage of the rebellion to declare its independence from Cyrodiil. 
These two events established the Gold Coast as an isolated haven from the troubles that plagued the rest of the continent, but not without setting up challenges of a different sort. In the Second Era 577, just as the last stones were being placed to complete Varen's Wall and the Imperial Navy was away dealing with the rebellion taking place to the north and east, a fleet of merchant warships and pirate vessels sailed into Anvil Harbour. A white flag adorned with a red sabre flew over each ship led by Fortunata Abdugal, a shipping magnet in the Gold Coast Trading Company. The fleet took control of the docks and disembarked a company of sailors and pirates, warriors that quickly overpowered the remaining troops loyal to the Imperial Perfect. In less than a day, Fortunata had taken control of Anvil, named herself Provincial Governor and declared that the Gold Coast was now a free and independent state from the Abacan Sea to Varian's Wall. The self-proclaimed provincial governor, better known as the Pirate Queen to friends and enemies alike, used her connections as a high-ranking merchant lord of the Gold Coast Trading Company to build her base of power she promised the pirates a safe haven and a share of the wealth pouring through the region in exchange for their backing and support. And the pirates, along with the merchant marines that had always been more loyal to Fortunata than to the company that employed them, gave the pirate queen the weapons she needed to take and maintain control of Anvil and the surrounded countryside. In many ways, the truth is, almost more unbelievable than the risque and outlandish adventure tales now appearing as broad sheets on the streets of Anvil. These body stories follow the exploits of the barely fictitious pirate empress Thusa Ap Lagud and they've become quite popular the actual pirate queen tolerates the tales if not actively encouraging their publication on a regular basis. Now, the blood red sabers on fields of white fly above Castle Anvil and the Anvil Lighthouse and the Pirate Queen has turned Anvil into a free city. No military vessels from Alliance are allowed to approach the Anvil docks. Instead, merchant ships from across Tamriel fill the wharfs, happy to buy and sell cargo at bargain prices. Even the once proud and influential Gold Coast Trading Company has acquiesced to the Pirate Queen's demands, deciding that profit is more important than arguing over respectability and who's in charge. In fact, the company does what the Pirate Queen tells it to. It doesn't take a profit to predict that the Pirate Queen has her sights set on Anvil's neighbor to the northeast, Kavach. She said as much in her much publicized declaration of independence. With more and more pirates and buccaneers rallying to her flag every day and with gold flowing from frightened nobles as protection money disguised as taxes, it's clear to see that Fortune Nata will soon have the resources to deal with Count Carolus and even Primate Arturius. It's just a matter of time, and the Pirate Queen has demonstrated over and over again that she can be very patient when it comes to letting her plans develop. By all accounts, Fortunata rules Anvil with an iron fist, and the Red Cell Pirates serve as her private army, raiding, rampaging, and performing the duties of enforcers whenever and wherever she directs them. She may be a cruel and merciless dictator, but she keeps the region under control and prevents anarchy from turning rampant. Can we really expect more than that from our rulers? <laughs> And so, uh, 
let's read of her glories. She's a beautiful, uh, she's a beautiful NP if you've never seen her. She's gorgeous. So let's read the glories of the Pirate Queen. And many of you scallywags haven't had the pleasure of sailing alongside the glorious Captain Fortunata. So, here's some facts to get you straight about her grand and glorious provincial governor. And Captain Fortunata shouts, the wind listens. Captain Fortunata has never had scurvy because scurvy doesn't want to make her mad. And Captain Fortunata once sank a boat when she loosed a powerful sneeze, but the sailors on board didn't drown because she ordered them to live. Hurricanes happen when Captain Fortunata farts into the wind. Captain Fortunata once spit on the city of Evermore, and that's where Lake Bajolais came from. I don't know how to say that lake name. That's quite a strange spelling to me. A stupid dark elf once told Captain Fortunata she couldn't sing. She punched him so hard he flew into the sky. We're, we're still waiting for him to calm down. And Captain Fortunata only uses a sword because she's tired of killing people with her little finger. Captain Fortunata doesn't fish. When she wants a fish, it flops up onto her deck and cooks itself. Sharks don't bite Captain Fortunata because they don't want to break their teeth. Daedric Prince is big to make deals with Captain Fortunata. And that's just the beginning of our beloved Pirate Queen's glories. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, huh? It's pretty funny. Hey, Binoc. Bianca and Canadian Dancer. Yeah, I think so too. She's pretty awesome. Deep Dark Hi and Storm and Quella. Angela and Quella. Hi, 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 hi. All right, so um, the last lore book is The Wolf and the Pirate Queen. Let's read that. The Wolf and the Pirate Queen. <laughs> The Wolf and the Pirate Queen, here we go. The Wolf and the Pirate Queen by Madara Salvaticus, Historian University of Gwimlan. Thanks to the actions of Carolus Aquilaris, the Wolf of Kavach, Anvil's defenses were practically non-existent when Captain Fortunata, the Pirate Queen, sailed into port. After numerous attempts by the Imperial soldiers stationed at the port city to invade Kavach, the barracks and anvil were practically empty due to defeat after defeat at the wolf's hands. Captain Fortunata's loyal pirates and buccaneers quickly took control of the city and she claimed the title of provincial governor for herself. That might have been the end of things as far as Count Carolus was concerned, except for what the Pirate Queen decided to do next. She declared that the Gold Coast was now an independent state, free and safe, separate from Cyrodiil and the Empire. And when she requested that Kavach join Anvil as part of the new order, the Count refused, referring preferring to continue to owe fealty to Emperor Varen. Not feeling totally confident at the time, Fortunata didn't press the demand, but she wouldn't forget the Count's lack of support. And when the soul burst occurred and Varen disappeared, she took advantage of Kavach's sudden isolation to make her demands more forceful. Anvil began pressing Kavach to join the Gold Coast, both diplomatically and by increasingly underhanded means. Marauders and bandit gangs began to appear along the Gold Road around Kavach, disrupting trade and harassing travelers. Kavach's elite guards, the warders, were dispatched to deal with the bandits, but each time the bandits were able to escape to the Stride River. 
They returned in greater numbers, amplifying their attacks by raiding outlying farms and sending frightened refugees into the city for protection. And despite these acts of aggression, Carolus remained staunch and refused to negotiate with the pirate queen. Infuriated, Fortunata announced that Kavach would be formally annexed into the Gold Coast and she sent the Anvil Guard to take command of the city. The Count of Kavach responded by putting the warders upon the walls and sending the cohort out to confront the invaders. The opposing forces met on the gold road near the Gottschall Inn and the more disciplined and highly trained cohort scattered the motley guards from Anvil but the situation wasn't as it appeared. It was a trap. An army of pirates exploded out of hiding and surrounded the cohort. White, ragged, and undisciplined, the pirates outnumbered the legionnaires six to one, and the cohort was wiped out in what has come to be known as the Gotcha Massacre. Well, Carolus Aquilarius had no choice. Without the support of the cohort, he had no option other than to swear fealty to the Gold Coast. Now caught between the Pirate Queen and the Pirate Primate of Akatosh, the Count seethes at his powerlessness, all the while doing everything he can to honor his vow and protect Kavach and his people. Well, 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 you know, it's kind of interesting when you think about it. The, the, uh, the, I'm going to close this for now. How much, uh, lore we have in history we have here. Oh, look at, I've gone right into my lingo. Hey, 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 Red Fox and dream soldier gosh it's so good to see you guys everybody was gone i think last week it was so quiet last week here especially in chat so it's nice to see everybody returned and viewers out there watching who don't chat hello 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 welcome 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 and i also want to extend um, a hello to uh the viewers of reruns and also those of you those of you who um watch uh, the reruns not only on Twitch but over on my YouTube channel thank you so much and oh my gosh thanks to those of you who have subscribed also uh, I know I've already said a thank you out there but um, my followers 1.2 now woohoo I don't know how that happened I'm gonna have an event celebration and a chat out uh, just for that here after the new year. Oh my gosh, that might mean I might be on camera, but we'll see. I don't know. I might just be me <laughs> in ESO. I don't know. I'm too shy to be on camera, but anyways. Okay, we'll see. Stay tuned for that coming up. All right, y'all. So let's take a look at this Gold Coast Pirate Queen. Now, I'm sorry to say, for those of you who have not yet done the quest, um, well, hmm, an order is placed and uh, papers are issued. And unfortunately, you get to take her out. Yes, alone. <laughs> you get to take her out. It's so sad to see that beautiful, really, seriously. She is by far the prettiest uh, NP I have seen in all the land of Tamriel. So, you know, whether you're doing the assassin quest line or whether you're doing the main storyline of um, Gold Coast, go get yourself to her, her palace and, and take a look at her. She's pretty. I aspire to look like her. No, I don't. But she's pretty. <laughs> so this is an ode to her. Now, 
because I'm also dealing with something else today that is on a personal level um, because of Dibella, um, the goddess of song and music and flowers. And I know, I know, I know she's, you know, all of the, um, all of the gods and goddesses of Tamriel, although they don't once use the word goddess except for Dibella. Um, there's their Daedra or Aedra, right? So, because they come from the oblivion, the other world. But um, I'm so excited to uh, share a little, a little ritual um, with her today. So I had other, I had other things ready to share with you. Like we were going to look at the Gold Coast Part One and Part Two, and uh, the Order of the Hour, and we were going to look at Goblin Tribes of the Gold Coast and Minotaurs because they are everywhere. But I know I'm going to be doing another episode on the Gold Coast, and uh, we'll look at all that fun stuff then. Okay, shall we? Oh, I'm so happy you agree with me. Well, my friends, we're going to go on a little journey. So come here. Get close to me. Come here. Okay. I want to uh, take a moment to prepare you for our travel. So here we go. Let me get you ready. So I'm going to give you a flower for safe passage and I want to let me see here where is it let me sprinkle you with fairy dust oh good there you go and now let's open the portal And I'm going to whisk you away to another one of my houses called High Hollow Hold. You know what, Dream Soldier? It is. It really is a, a little game all its own. It has a... Uh, it's separate from the rest. It really is. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. All right, here we are. And we are in High Hollow. Um, it's a noble home. And I'm going to take you out to the garden. Because for since I, since I moved in and decorated, I have always... Uh, I did this. I set this garden area up in honor of Dibella. And there is the lady herself. That's a statue of her. Isn't she beautiful? So, we're going to have a little ceremony in her honor. But before we even go down there, I have a few things I need to do to prepare us. So the first thing uh, is, let me bestow a blessing on you so that you are prepared to go down to see her. And then we'll go down. I want you to see her little garden with butterflies <gasps> and a bunny rabbit. Oh, it greeted us. How sweet is that? And flowers and over here, look at how cute some fawns. Oh, they're so sweet, aren't they? Little cutie pies. All right, let's come back here <clears throat> because we do need to prepare for for our audience with Dibella. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here we go. Let's um, let's get the. You know, in some some places in the world, they sage to make a sense of sacred space, don't they? 
Well, we're going to release all the sweet fireflies to lift our prayers up to Dibella. Did you know that mother gods are just as important and powerful as father gods? Mother, father, god, goddess, all is one. Okay, now let's get her ready and let's go ahead and offer her let's offer her something here we go die bella die bella to you we offer this petal And now I do believe we're ready to read about Dibella's mysteries and revelations by Lady Augustine Villani, Sybil of the House of Dibella. The skies over Wayrest are stormy and changeable, more often gray than blue, but some mornings in second seed the sun rises into heaven's blue and clear, and a mild, warm breeze blows in from the lilac bay. It was on just such a morning, under trees fragrant with blossoms, that I was welcoming several new novices to their vocation in the house of Dibella. They were full of questions as the young always are. Holy Sybil, asked a young oyster catcher from Aldcroft, is love truly the answer to every question? It is, if the question addresses the heart, said I, rarely if it addresses the mind. Holy Sybil, asked the shy engraver from Alcair, is it true we must dance for the worshippers while unclad? I smiled. That is as your spirit shall will, and as the weather shall allow. I have one, Holy Sybil, said the clever child of a way rest banker. If the Atra sacrifice themselves, each to add something to the making of the world, what did Our Lady contribute to the world? In reply, I scooped a double handful of fallen blossoms from the sward and rained them over his astonished brow. I am troubled, Holy Sybil, said the hostler from North Point. For I know not who my father is. That is not to the goddess of beauty, I gently replied, for she says, no matter the seed, if the shoot is nurtured with love, will not the flower be beautiful? What if a congregant seeks me as a larger partner? said the knight Skion of Evermore. But I find her without favor. Love whomever you may, I say. But love coerced is not love at all. Holy Sybil, is it true what they say? Stammered the owl keeper's heir, that you lost your sight from the great flu. It is, I smiled. But what of that? For can I not dance? Holy Sybil, Holy Sybil. Peace, young novices, I cried. For it is Freydas. The bell tolls down, and the congregants await us in the chapel. Come now, come, bring wine, 
bring tambours, bring light, feet, and warm hearts, Our Lady calls us to worship. Oh, that's just such a beautiful tome. I really, really love that book. So, come now. I would uh, unclad, but we don't really unclad. Um, so, here is Dibella's ritual stone. Let me show it to you up close. So, if you place a Dibella ritual stone on the land, what you are saying for that land is that that land has become sanctified as love, as love land, and all that grows and steps and visits that land will be blessed with sacred love. Isn't that beautiful? So I have a little ceremony for you now. First, let me turn off this music box. Come now. First. Oh, maybe that music is even louder. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm going to turn it back on. Because at least I know you can hear the instrument that I'm going to play. All right, but first, before I do anything, I do want to make an offering to Dibella. So let us make an offering to Dibella. We begin again with the ritual. Dibella, the etheric flower is offered. To Dibella. The petal is presented and I actually have a Dibella flower Dibella's promise that we will plant right there isn't that beautiful Dibella's promise I'll go in close so you can see this flower. It is really beautiful. It's the flower of love, by the way. So if you want to give a flower to anyone in Tamriel, a flower of love, it will always be Dibella's promise because that's what Dibella promises us, sacred love. And now let us do one other thing, actually two other things. First, I'm going to play some gentle music in her honor. And now I'm going to dance. I didn't have it set up, sorry. Because we dance, we dance, we dance, we dance, we dance. In her honor. So join me in dancing. Wherever you are, if you are in Tamriel, dance, dance, dance. And feel the magnificence of her love.
Now, now we can go for her blessing. But let's wait just a moment. I feel like it needs to happen a little bit longer. Hey, alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Austin. Hey, hey. Nice to see you. So I hope you're dancing. Wiggle your toes. You can do it. Wiggle your toes. Hey, cross thread. Wiggle your toes. Feel the movement in your body. Feel that you're opening to the beauty of song, of music, of dance, of nature, the flowers, all in honor of Dibella, the goddess of sacred love. As we honor her, as we honor Goddess Dibella, we become blessed with her power and blessed with the <laughs> sacred love she gives us freely. And so now, you see, we become imbued, fortified with all she has to give us. Yes, indeed. Woohoo! There you have it. There's my little Dibella ritual. Hmm. So, you know what? Um, today was a special day because I felt a need to immerse us in sacred love and kindness and gentleness and just... We live in a warrior world filled with a gray aggression and filled with attack and war, filled with killing. I kill too. And I think from time to time, we have to stop and see nature and feel again, feel the emotion and fill up with love. Yes, I will definitely focus on dragons. In fact, one of the books I was going to read um, right now at the end of Dibella, which you must be intuitive because you certainly have tuned into it, is Worship of the Dragon God. <laughs> and that's the start of going into dragon lore. So, Worship of the Dragon God, Lord Akatosh Linda, lend us your might, Lord Akatosh, grant us your light. That's a popular prayer to Akatosh, the Dragon God. If there is a single divine who holds dominion over the Gold Coast, it has to be Akatosh, the Dragon God of Time. And from the Grand Cathedral of Akatosh in Kavach, and radiating outward, the word of Akatosh and his servants spreads the light and the truth of the dragon god in all directions. Reputed to be the first and greatest of the eight divines and the first of the gods to form in the beginning place, Akatosh watches over the land and its people with a singular ferocity never shrinking in his role as the god defender of the empire even while the empire lies broken and shattered as the primate of kavach likes to say at every opportunity the dragon god sees beyond the concerns of the day and contemplates the entire expanse of time the current situation is merely a minor disturbance in the flow of events, and Akatash has everything well in hand. Akatash promotes three key qualities in his sphere. Endurance, invincibility, and everlasting legitimacy. Perhaps that's why the Empire was so quick to embrace the Dragon God and his tenants. In the words of the primate of Kavach, 
Here are the ways in which Akatosh embodies the three key qualities. Endurance. This quality represents Akatosh's ability and strength to continue or last and is directly tied to his role as the god of time. Akatosh endures. And so do the true believers who have accepted his words and devoted themselves to his teachings. Despite fatigue, regardless of stress or adverse conditions, Akatosh and his followers carry on. This is the dragon god's lasting quality. Invincibility. Akatosh cannot be conquered, defeated, or subdued, and neither can those who believe in and honor the dragon god. This is the dragon god's indomitable quality. Everlasting legitimacy. This quality must be examined in all its parts. It represents not only Akatosh's eternal aspect, but his reverence for law, reason, and the ruling principles of hereditary right. Nothing blessed and sanctified by Akatosh can be considered spurious or unjustified. This is the dragon god's continuing and lawful quality. And beyond these basic tenets, primate of Kavach and his priests preached the five commands of Akatosh to faithful and faithless alike. Serve and obey your emperor. Since its inception, the empire and Akatosh worship have gone hand in hand as his command clearly exemplifies. Study the covenants these written agreements between Akatosh and his mortal followers, such as Alicia and her descendants, serve as tokens of their joined blood and pledged faith. All followers are urged to read and understand these eternal contracts. Worship the Eight. But Akatosh is not a jealous god. He expects his followers to pay tribute not just to himself, but to his fellow divines, as we have done this day, to Dibella. Do your duty. Duty and responsibility figure prominently in the teachings of the rule-loving dragon god, and failure to fulfill your obligations to his sin in the eyes of Akatosh. Heed the commands of the saints and priests, Akatosh favors hierarchy and structure, so it comes as no surprise that he demands that his followers comply with the orders of the saints and the priests. The primate of Kavach often declares, As Akatosh wills it, so shall it be. For the dragon god of time embodies yesterday, today, and tomorrow and he embraces the rules that keep the world ordered and precise. And by honoring Akatosh with devotion and worship, his followers endeavor to do the same. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Yes, indeed, my friends. Hey Sasquatch, so good to see you. Okay, I am going to take us back, 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 back to where we always meet. To the Eight Divines Resort. As we leave Dibella and her garden this day. And go back to the Telavani Peninsula. I've had so much pleasure chatting with you and sharing the lore. Let's go back into the house, shall we? 
Actually, you know what? Let's go over here to the garden. Today we'll close in the garden. I wish. Here's my wish. My wish is that someday, someone who is a listener to the lore will come and, and enjoy a day with me right here. Come and enjoy a time with me right here and perhaps discuss their favorite lore with me. We'll see if that ever happens. The invitation has been put out there. Now, here's my favorite place of all, under the umbrella of the pink mushroom, <laughs> beside the running waters. I do enjoy this sound. So I'm going to begin our day today as I'm going to end our day today as I began it. Simply enjoying the sounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Friday. A wonderful, wonderful weekend. And from my heart to each of yours, have a wonderful, happy new year. Hey, I'll see you in 2024. Bye. Bye, T. Jard. <laughs>